بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين حمدا يليق بجلال وجهه وعظيم سلطانه الحمد لله حمدا يوافي نعمه ويكافئ مزيده الحمد لله حمدا يرضى بالله تعالى عنا إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونشكره ولا نكفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو حي لا يموت وهو على كل شيء قدير لا إله إلا الله وحده صدق وعده ونصر عبده وأعز جنده وهزم الأحزاب وحده لا شيء قبله ولا شيء بعده لا إله إلا الله ولا نعبد إلا إياه مخلصين له الدين ولو كره الكافرون وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وصفيه من خلقه وخليله بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة فكشف الله به الغمة وتركنا على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك أرسله الله عز وجل بقوله وما أرسلناك إلا رحمة للعالمين وأرسله بقوله يا أيها النبي إنا أرسلناك شاهدا ومبشرا ونذيرا وداعيا إلى الله بإذنه وسراجا منيرا فاللهم صلي وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين وعلى صحابته الخيرين النيرين وعلى التابعين وتابع التابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وعنا معهم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم آمين ثم أما بعد يقول الله عز وجل في كتابه الكريم مذكرا عباده المؤمنين يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون ويقول سبحانه وتعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ويقول سبحانه وتعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون ويقول سبحانه وتعالى مخاطبا البشرية جمعاء يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا اللهم اجعلنا من المتقين واجعلنا من الصالحين واجعلنا من الصادقين واجعلنا من المخلصين المخلصين واجعلنا هادين مهديين لا ضالين ولا مضلين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم آمين ثم أما بعد We always start with Allah and invoke the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most compassionate, the most merciful. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the bottom of our hearts for His blessings on us. We thank Allah for everything that we remember and everything that we don't remember. Because if we were to sit down and remember Allah's blessings on us and try to count them one after another, and we spend our lifetime doing that, we will not be able to do so. وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْصُوهَا So we thank Allah and we say, Ya Allah, we thank you for the abundance of your blessings, especially us. I'm talking about us, Muslims who live in the West, who live in this country especially, who became part of this country. We're so blessed, brothers and sisters. We're so blessed. Alhamdulillah. There are people today, they couldn't go to Salat al-Jum'ah. Why? Because probably if they took these few steps to the masjid, they will probably die of hunger in Somalia. That didn't happen to you and me. There are people today, 
that don't know where their family is. The mother separated from her children, from the husband, because of the situation in Somal that we all hear about. There are people that couldn't go to the masjid out of fear. Or when they left their home, they knew they might not come back. Like what's happening in Syria and in other countries in Libya. May Allah Azza wa Jal give them peace and security. May Allah remove the oppressor and the oppression away from them and replace it with peace and justice. Ameen, Ya Rabbal Alim. You and I, we are not suffering from that. So, we are in a great blessing. I know each one of us has a problem. Each one of us has a problem. There's no one that doesn't have a problem. Every one of us has a challenge in life. God knows what it is. Husband, wife relationship challenge, you and your children ch challenge, you and your neighbor, you and your income, you and your job, you and your health, Allahu A'lam. But it is enough to know. It's very comforting to know that we are at this moment in the house of Allah and we are the guests of Ar Rahman Ar Rahim. We are the guests of the most merciful. We're the guests of the most forgiving. People don't like to forgive. Allah loves to forgive. We're in the house of the most generous. You have a problem, ask Allah. People don't, would like to give you once, twice, but Allah loves to give part of His names and attributes, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you have a problem, this is the place. This is where you let out your heart to Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you tell Allah your problem. You make munajah, you talk to Allah, you make dua. But when you sit down in the house of Allah, you don't want your mind to be busy in your problems, not in Allah. Because that's not adab. You want to make your mind hanging and your heart and your soul with Allah, not sitting down thinking about your problems outside the masjid. And by the end of the khutbah, you didn't even hear anything because you were busy thinking about your problems, not about Allah. So relax and let go. And pray to Allah and Allah will take care of you. And that's what he promised you. And Allah does not break his promise. We do. Allah does not change his word. We do. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Rabbul Alameen. And we are his ibad subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are in the month of Ramadan brothers and sisters. And Allah azza wa jal in the month of Ramadan gave us a task, a goal that we measure our success in this month based on how close we get to that goal. When Allah said in Surah Al-Baqarah, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامُ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So Allah Azza wa Jal has prescribed and written on us to fast like He prescribed and written on, on the nations that came before us. It's not our problem that they're not practicing what Allah has written on them. It's not that Islam is harder and they got it easier. No, they got fasting too, but they're not following it. Alhamdulillah that we are. And we make dua for guidance for everyone. May Allah guide the alameen. Inshallah. May Allah guide everyone. I mean, we're not going to limit Allah's guidance only to a group of people. We make dua for everyone. So Allah says, it was written upon you like it was written upon those who came so that you may gain taqwa. So the question the Muslims ask himself, what am I thinking about the whole day? Because we fast in the day, not in the night. In the night there is taraweeh and there is reading Quran and you're relaxing. But fasting is in the day. And in the day is when your taqwa indicator has to go up. So that you'll be ready. The more taqwa you have, the more you are ready to listen, understand and hear comprehend, internalize, and apply the Qur'an. That's why we fast in the day and we listen to Qur'an, taraweeh, in the night. Someone might think, why don't we pray taraweeh in the day while we're fasting? Maybe it's more sawab. No, it's not. Because the way Allah designed this month is you fast in the day, so your taqwa indicator goes up so that when the night comes, you are ready to listen to the Qur'an. Because taqwa is very important when it comes to listening to the Qur'an, understanding, internalizing, and applying. Because the Qur'an has a message for you, and that message is what makes your life meaningful. It's what makes your existence meaningful. It's what makes you important. 
without this faith and this deen, you are nobody. You're just one in a seven billion. And this is only now seven billion. There are billions before them and billions after them. But it is the Quran who gives you an importance, who make you important. Transfers you from a mortal being to an immortal. After you die, you live forever. خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا أَبَدًا That's what the Quran does. But the Quran has a message. This message, for you to get it, it's called guidance. Because the message is out there. The Mus'haf is everywhere. But are you getting it? Are you getting the guidance in the Quran? So Allah Azza wa Jal established an amazing equation in the Quran. Fasting leads to taqwa. The month of Ramadan is the month of the Quran. Shahru Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Quran. Allah says, Shahru Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Quran. And what is the Quran? Hudan linnasi wa bayinatim min al-huda wal-furqan. Do you hear the word huda two times? Hudan linnasi wa bayinatim min al-huda wal-furqan. Two times the word huda. So the month of the Ramadan is the month of the Quran and the Quran is guidance. We get that. And most of that happens at night because inna anzalnahu fi laylatul qadr. Laylatul qadr is layla, which means night. It's not inna anzalnahu fi naharil qadr, fi laylatul qadr. So the nights of Ramadan is the nights of the Quran. And we pray taraweeh at night and we read Quran at night. Of course, we read Quran in the day also when we're fasting, but that's the prime time when we come to taraweeh to listen. Subhanallah. So there is something that needs to meet in the middle. You find Siyam leads to Taqwa. Ramadan is the month of the Quran. Quran is guidance. What's the relationship between guidance and Taqwa? This puzzle is what you should be thinking about this entire month. Taqwa leads you to, to get the guidance of the Quran. As Allah said in the second ayah in Surah Al-Baqarah, Alif Lam Mim, after Bismillah Rahman Rahim, Alif Lam Mim, ذَٰلِكَ الْكِتَابُ That is the book. لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ No doubt in it. هُدًا To whom? لِلْمُتَّقِينَ You see now? See how the Quran connects everything together? هُدًا This Quran is هُدًا but to a special kind of people. People who have taqwa. هُدًا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ And then Allah gives you you say, okay, Ya Allah, I want to be among the muttaqeen so that I can get the guidance of the Quran, so that I can get this thing right. I can get my life right, my death right, and my hereafter right. So that my life will be meaningful, so that I will be somebody, so that I wouldn't just live and die like an animal. So Allah Azza wa Jal says, I have a way for you. The way is fasting. Fasting leads to taqwa, and this Quran is hudan lil muttaqeen. That's why you fast in the day, anticipating the guidance of the night. You fast in the day to fill up your tank on taqwa so that by the time comes that you will go and listen to the Quran and understand what you listen, your state of mind, your state of heart, your state of soul is ready to receive the guidance when you listen from the Imam and you listen to the Quran. Because Allah says, ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ هُدًا للمتقين. And Allah says, كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامُ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مُنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Fasting leads to taqwa. So the question is, what are you thinking about the whole day? You know many of us, sadly, and sometimes we do that. The whole day we're thinking, what food are we going to break our fast on tonight? What did my wife cook? Did she cook my best? Oh my God, I can't wait. Did you cook enough food? Do you, this is the whole day what you're thinking. And you know what? That's okay if you don't know. But if you know, it's not okay. Because if that's the only thing you're getting out of fasting, there are people who fast to break their fast. And there are people who fast to gain taqwa. And there's a huge difference between the two. There are people who fast, and the whole day, what are they thinking about? Breaking their fast. And there are people who are fasting, what are they thinking the whole day? How much taqwa do I have? How can I increase my taqwa? What can I say? What can I do? What can I think about that will increase the indicator of taqwa? So that by the time the night comes and I go to taraweeh, I will be ready to receive the guidance of the Quran. Because this is the month of the Quran. That's how much preparation you have to go through in order to be ready to get the guidance of the Quran. That's why some people don't get it. They think you just open the book and they'll get the guidance. Yeah, you can open the book, you can read. You can understand, you can comprehend, but following, getting the guidance, getting what Allah wants to communicate with you, not what you want to communicate with yourself. 
Some people have already predetermined what guidance is and they're going to the Quran just to find the proof for their predetermination. And some people when they open the Quran, they have a blank head. They say, Ya Allah, whatever you tell me, I'm not, I don't have any predetermined views. I don't have predetermined understandings. I don't have predetermined guidance. I have not said Islam is this. Now I'm going to go to the Quran to find the support of my point. No, no, no. I will go to the Quran and let it teach me. Ya Allah, you teach me. You tell me what you want from me. Not what other wants me to think that you want from me. And this is a huge difference, brothers and sisters. It's a big difference. It doesn't matter. People could lead each other astray, but Allah leads people to Jannah and to As-Sirat Al-Mustaqeem. That's why we always say, Ihdina As-Sirat Al-Mustaqeem. Taqwa, brothers and sisters, is this an amazing loaded word in Al-Quran Al-Kareem that we all have to reflect on. And it has a similarity with Siyam. I don't know if you ever thought about the two hadith that talks about, one talks about taqwa and one talks about fasting. The hadith that talks about taqwa says, At-taqwa ha huna, at-taqwa ha huna. Taqwa is here, hidden. Hmm. And fasting is hidden too. That's why they go well together. I don't know if you're fasting. You don't know if I'm fasting. I don't know who's fasting, who's not. Like when we were kids, we used to ask each other in elementary school to prove that you're fasting, stick your tongue out. That's how we used to know. And if your tongue is like white and dry, you're fasting. If it has chocolate on it, then for sure you're not fasting, right? That's how we used to know who's fasting and who's not, as children in elementary school. Subhanallah. But taqwa, if siyam, as an, as an action, it's hidden. You, you don't even know who's fasting, who's sick, who's not, who's sahibul udhr, who's not. It's just between you and Allah. And that's how taqwa is. But also, just like taqwa and fasting are hidden, they have an external manifestation and external, which means the one who's fasting is supposed to act and is supposed to live in a certain way. So fasting, because fasting doesn't mean that you have a license to become angry. Fasting does not, is not a mean that you have a license to show up to work two o'clock in the afternoon and leave work one o'clock in the afternoon. So you leave work before you come to work in practically. That's what happened in some Muslim countries, right? That doesn't mean that. Fasting doesn't give you a license to have a short temper. As a matter of fact, the whole point is to push you to your limits and see how much can you handle. Because what makes people angry? When they're hungry, that's when they get angry easily. When they're thirsty, when they're sleepy, and when they're tired. And fasting does all of them to you. And you still cannot get hung angry. So it pushes you to the limit. It's a training. It's a course. It's a camp. It pushes you to the limit and it says you cannot. It makes you hungry and thirsty and tired and sleepy and you cannot get angry. So that next time outside Ramadan, when you are not hungry and thirsty and tired and sleepy, you have a better chance of controlling your anger. Because if you could do it with all of that, you could do it without that. So it pushes you under so much pressure. And that's one thing. Sometimes marriages get destroyed because either the wife has short temper, which is the rare case, or the husband has a short temper and always angry. Sometimes relationship between parents and children are ruined because of anger. Sometimes relationship between brothers and brothers, brothers and sisters, between neighbors, between friends, because of anger. And anger, you take Islam out of the heart of any one person. You take Islam, you take peace out of the heart of any person, all what is left is anger. That's why before the time of the Prophet and at the time of the Prophet, people were angry. The days of Jahiliyyah, people were angry. Why? Because it doesn't need an explanation. If someone doesn't have peace inside his heart, well, what is there? If there's no peace, there is war. <laughs> if there's no peace, there is war and there is anger. So you need to explore this meaning of the Quran. So if I were you, I will go and pick 30 ayah in the Quran and each day pick one ayah and reflect on it and see how can I gain taqwa from that ayah. Because you know something very interesting about the word taqwa in the Quran? The word taqwa has a general meaning. Linguistic meaning and a non-linguistic meaning and this. I'm not going to go into that. That needs a lecture. But you want to know what's the meaning of the word taqwa in the Quran? Read the ayah. Read the ayah itself. The word taqwa is a lorded word. Allah uses it with different things. So sometimes taqwa, you want to know what taqwa means in one ayah, read the ayah. 
So for example, Allah Azza wa Jal says, Ya ayyuhan nasu taqu rabbakum. O mankind, be mindful of your Lord. Be God-fearing. Be God-fearing. It doesn't necessarily mean fear God. That also exists in the Quran, but it's in a different way. Taqwa bimuntaqi means be God-fearing, right? So subhanAllah, what is it talking? O mankind, be mindful of your Lord and do not discriminate between one another. But thou, how does Allah say it? Allah says you all go back to Adam. Not to even pair, not to one, one soul. Ya ayyuhanas taqwa rabbakum ladhi khalaqakum min nafsin wahida. All mankind goes back to one soul. I mean, it doesn't get more plain than that. It doesn't get more clear than that. Like, if you discriminate against someone else, in effect, you're discriminating against your own self because you and that someone else came back from the same soul. So you're only criticizing yourself. <laughs> and then Allah says that soul was split into two. وَخَلَقَ مِنْهَا زَوْجَهَا And then from these pair, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declared that there will be many men and women. Because why? Because the alternative could have been possible. Allah could have created every human alone from Turab, just like he created Adam. When Allah explained the state of Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, which is miraculous, Allah said, I created Isa just like I created Adam. Which means each and every one could have been created from Turab. But then you have no brothers, no sisters, no father, no mother, no relationship from people. But Allah willed it in a way that all mankind goes back to a pair. So taqwa in this ayah means stop discriminating. This is in general. For the mu'mineen, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَى فَأَصْلِحُوا بَيْنَ أَخَوَيْكُمْ So there is a general teaching, hudan linnasi, and then there is bayinatin min al-huda wal-furqan. Bayinatin min al-huda wal-furqan is for you and me. This is for the believers, for the Muslims. Hudan linnasi is for everybody. It's open invitation, come and use. So hudan linnasi, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ اتَّقُوا رَبَّكُمْ أَلَّذِي خَلَقَكُمْ مِن نَفْسٍ وَاحِدَ بَيِّنَاتٍ مِنَ الْهُدَى وَالْفُرْقَانِ يَا أَيُّهَا اللَّهِ إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَ فَأَصْلِحُ بَيْنَ أَخَوَيْكُمْ That's particularly for you and me. So there's general brotherhood in humanity and there's general specific brotherhood for the believers. So there's general teachings and specific teachings. هُدًا لِلنَّاسِ وَبَيِّنَاتٍ مِنَ الْهُدَى وَالْفُرْقَانِ Beautiful. Taqwa in the Quran means when you sit down and remember death. يَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا اتَّقُوا اللَّهَ حَقَّ تُقَاتِهِ وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ O men, O believers, be mindful of Allah as you should be mindful of Allah and do not die except when you are in the state of Islam. Someone say, Ajeeb, do we know when we're going to die? No, we don't. So how does Allah say, do not die except when you are in a state of Islam? Oh, this is beauty of Arabic. If you don't know when you're going to die, that means you should always live in the state of Islam so that when death comes suddenly, you already die in the state of Islam. So it's another way of saying live in the state of Islam, but in a way that shocks you. Do not die except in the state of, <gasps> you get the jolt. And that's what Ramadan does. One month every year, it shocks us. It delivers the shock. So subhanAllah, every ayah in the Quran, different ayat. Ya alladhina amanu taqullah wa qulu qawlan sadida. O mankind, be mindful of Allah. O human, no, no, no. O believers, ya alladhina amanu. Be mindful of Allah, be God-fearing, be aware, be alert, be awake, and speak in a straight manner. No lying, no vain talk, no just wasting time, wasting your breath. Because when you are talking, someone is writing. وَقُولُوا قَوْلًا سَدِيدًا يُصْلِحْ لَكُمْ أَعْمَالَكُمْ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَمَنْ يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا So the Prophet ﷺ in the beginning of every khutbah used to recite these ayat and remind people of taqwa because every ayah gives you a different taste, a different color, a different flavor, a different meaning, a different type, a different kind of taqwa. So what you should do every day in Ramadan, you should pick one ayah that has the word ittaqullah and then you should look what is the meaning of that ayah? Because that is the meaning of taqwa in that ayah. And you should make your goal in that day to capitalize on that. That might help you so that you don't think about what you're going to break your fast with. When you ask five years old Muslims and 50 years old Muslims, why do we fast? We all have this common answer. We all have this common answer. What is the common answer? We fast so that we will feel with poor people. Well, every Muslim have this. From the east to the west, from the north to the south. But when you go to their house and see how they break their fast, lamb, beef, chicken, shrimp, every kind of meat that Allah created that is halal in the book, 
is on the table. You're like, what is this? This last supper? Tomorrow is the day of judgment. You're trying to taste all the food. Like, what is this? What happened? Huh? That, that, shows, that shows. And who gets the brunt of that? The wife who's cooking. Instead of spending the whole day learning Quran and, and learning her deen and iman so that she can raise your children with deen and iman and with good manners. She's spending the whole day in the kitchen and she's fasting. And she's spending the whole day in the heat of the kitchen. And at the end of the day, you come and eat. There's not enough salt. Not even a thank you. And then you call taqwa. Taqwa is husnul khuluq. Taqwa is when the Prophet ﷺ, and just in case you haven't noticed, poor people when they break their fast, they don't break their fast like rich people. Poor people when they break their fast, they break their fast like poor people. They have humble food and they don't have enough of it. Even of that humble food, they don't have enough to fill their stomach. That's why the month of Ramadan is Shahr al-Qur'an and Shahr al-Siyam. Don't make it Shahr al-Ta'am. I don't know why we cook the most fancy food and the most delicious desserts in Ramadan. I was thinking about that and I was trying to be positive. So I, I came up with a reason that Muslims in the old ages used to cook the best, food, the best food and give it to the poor. Because the poor are poor the whole year. And, they, and then they fast in Ramadan. Ya akhi, let them eat good food in Ramadan. But somewhere along the time, the doors got closed and the food stayed in. So maybe it started with a positive thing. But brothers and sisters, we keep, even when we eat in the month of Ramadan, we eat in a manner that keeps with the spirit of the month. Like we actually eat less in Ramadan. We're supposed to eat less. Even though you say, but I was fasting. You were fasting, but this is the month that you feel with poor people according to you. So keep up with the wisdom that you're preaching. May Allah Azza wa Jal enable us and inspire us to be good believers and to have taqwa. Allahumma ja'alna min muttaqeen. أقول ما تسمعون واستغفر الله لي ولكم نستغفرون ونعم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه من والاه واستنى بسنته واقتدى بهداه إلى يوم الدين brothers and sisters one of the ways taqwa manifests itself is that when you are truthful 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 honest to your word and one of the things that where the rubbers hit the road and it shows there is honesty or not is when it comes to money. Because people love money. <laughs> and they love it to a point, it's very interesting, right? If you ask someone, which is more dear to you, your life or your money? They say, my life. So if I choose, would you lose your life or lose your money? Say, no, I will lose my money, but I will keep my life. But interestingly, when it happens, people are willing to die to defend their money. Ajib. If you die to defend your money, you're not going to enjoy your money anymore. But this is how much money has a hold on you. Allah knows that. Allah is the one who created us. So where the rubber hits the road, money is dear to you. That's why Allah Azza wa Jal asks you to do three things with your money to pass the test, to show that you are from a sadiqeen, truthful or not. First thing Allah asks you to add, to cut the fat. You know when you slam, you go slaughter a lamb and you go to the thing and you say, please clean the fat out. Clean the fat out. So that we call zakah. Zakah, purification. You purify by cutting the fat out. Zakah. It's 2.5%, not much. Just like when you take a lamb and you tell the butcher, just clean the fat, please. Purify it. Alhamdulillah. But then step number two is where it shows your truthfulness. When you take that lamb and cut it in half and give half to the poor and half to yourself, now that's called sadaq. And from the word sadaq came the word sadaqah. It's a ha in the middle. That ha in the middle, ta'neeth, just to make it beautiful. Sadaqah. Choose that you're sadaq. You put your money where your mouth, where you say your heart is. And Allah knows that. And He told you, I, you will not attain the state of taqwa and the state of birr since this is the month of taqwa, right? لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ You will not attain the state of taqwa until what? Until you spend of what you love. No, no, no. Not any money. Not that pennies, that old pennies that are so rusty you don't even know if it's a penny or not. No, no, no. It's we're talking about hundred dollar bills. لَن تَنَالُوا الْبِرَّ حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِمَا تُحِبُّونَ But then there is a higher. It's called tadhiya. Tadhiya. Tadhiya means sacrifice. That's when you give the most and keep the least. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam brought the lamb for Eid al-Adha. 
to Sayyida Aisha radiallahu anha, our mother, said, you know, do what you're supposed. She knows what to do. Keep one-fourth, distribute three-fourths. So he comes back and he says, at the end of the day, Ya Aish, dear beloved wife Aisha. I wish we can talk to our wives like that sometimes, right? It helps. It's healthy. So he said, Ya Aisha, Ya Aish. She said, Naam, Ya Rasulullah. He said, what happened to the lamb? She said, Ya Rasulullah, three-fourths of it is gone and one-fourth of it stayed, like you instructed us. He said, no, Ya Aisha, three-fourths of it stayed and one-fourth of it will be gone. The fourth that we will eat, that's what's gone. But the three-fourths, that's what stayed because now it's with Allah. So this is called tadhiyah. And you know what is interesting? When a believer sacrifices, because lamb, sacrificing lamb, is a symbolic. Sayyidina Ibrahim was about to sacrifice his son. Allahu Akbar. And that's when Allah told. So when you sacrifice a lamb, it's a symbolic language. Ya Allah, I'm willing to sacrifice anything for your sake. Huh? Subhanahu wa ta'ala. As long as I'm not hurting anyone else, I will sacrifice anyone, anything in your sake. So that's called tadhiyah. And you know what we do when we do this lamb sacrifice, which is symbolic, which means we sacrifice. Do you know what we do? We celebrate. Have you ever heard someone celebrating sacrifice? People, when they sacrifice, they sit down and cry. They're sad. Oh my God, I'm just going through so much sacrifice. Muslims, when they sacrifice for Allah, they're having a blast. They're having Eid, celebration. They call it Eid al-Adha. So from zakah to sadaqah to sacrifice to tadhiyah, May Allah Azza wa Jal make us taste that. Ameen Ya Rabbil Alameen. Because you know what? We will all live poor and we will all die poor. We will all live poor and we'll all die poor. Because Allah said financially, Ya ayyuha nasu antumul fuqara ila Allah wa Allah al-ghani al-hameed. O mankind, you are poor to Allah and Allah is the most, is self-sufficient, self-praising. So financially, even if you have a billion dollar in your account financially, you are poor and Allah rich. The only richness that we, the only richness that we possess, is the richness of iman in our heart in La ilaha illallah. That's the only richness we have. So you might as well not live poor and die poor. You might as well look poorness in the eye and say, "I defeated you. I had nothing and I still gave." That's when you live poor and die rich. When you look and poorness in the eye and you say I had nothing and I still gave that's when you defeat poorness inside your heart brothers and sisters your brothers and sisters in this masjid has done a campaign just to make you taste something a campaign of a thousand people not a thousand dollars per individual a thousand people with one hundred one hundred dollar one time donation especially you a brother who did drop me into the khutbah here asked me ya sheikh what is, when you think of Garden Grove Masjid, what do you think of? I said, I think of the 3,000 Qiyamul Layl, 3,000 youth in this masjid making Qiyamul Layl. Brothers and sisters, $100 per individual does not need a fundraising. It needs humbleness. As Allah said, those who give what they give, and they are so humble, so shy, so embarrassed. Ya Allah, sorry, we're not giving enough. Ya Allah, this is nothing. We're sorry. وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْتُونَ مَا آتَوْ وَقُلُوبُهُمْ وَجِيلَةً أَنَّهُمْ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ رَاجِعُونَ Allah praises those in the Qur'an. So I'm not going to stand up after Salat al-Jum'ah and say, raise your hand if you will donate. I'm going to tell you, raise your head and raise your heart and walk up straight because you are a Muslim and support this masjid not only with $100 one-time donation, that's a given. That's, your, that's even less than zakah. <laughs> That's a gift so that this masjid sustain its programs in Ramadan and a little bit after Ramadan. But I'm asking you to support more and to make this masjid full of activities for us, our wives, our children. And as Allah taught us, Rabbana hablana min azwajina wa dhurriyatina qurrata a'yun waj'alna lil muttaqina imama. Allahumma gfil lil muslimina wal muslimat wal mu'minina wal mu'minat al ahya'i minhum wal amwat innaka qareebun sami'un mujibu al-da'awat Allahumma a'izza bina al-islam wa ansur bina al-muslimin wa a'li bina kalimatay al-haqq wa al-deen birahmatika ya arham al-rahimin Allahumma ameen ibad Allah إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم وأقم الصلاة إن الصلاة تنهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر